It's a pretty good job number, 390, kind of like that Goldilocks level. Wages went up, but they weren't just so bad that we're just worried about the Federal Reserve. Your take on the jobs number. You know, I think it's a great number. We already knew that employers wanted to hire. The question was, were there going to be enough workers to meet the demand uh, that employers have to hire people? And we saw that they were able to find 390,000 additional people who wanted to go back to work. And we saw women's labor force participation hit a post-pandemic high in this month. So one of the big questions has been, will women return to the labor force? And we are seeing that labor force participation uh, start to increase. Yeah, Tyler, uh, I, I brought up the retail thing. Again, I'm not trying to find holes in it, but you want to be honest about the consumer because the consumer sort of is the American economy. We talk about inflation. It, it's a regressive tax inflation. Those who can least afford it are the ones that get, because we all pay the same thing for gas, no matter pretty much how much money we make. Your take on the number. Well, I agree with Betsy that it was a strong number and it's kind of status quo ex ante in, in that we had a tight labor market before this May jobs report. We have a tight labor market with the May jobs report. In terms of the inflationary pressure, you know, I was disappointed to see inf the labor force participation rate not tick up by more. It did tick up, but it didn't offset the decline in labor force participation of the preceding month. And, you know, when it comes to inflation, I think that I think those two stories are related because workers respond to real wages, not nominal wages. And we've been seeing real wages continue to, to decline in recent month, months because the nominal wage growth just hasn't been keeping up with, the, with, with inflation. Is there anything, Betsy, that the government can do on inflation? I, I know we always now these days we look to the government for, for answers on everything. Sometimes yeah, the government so can't do anything. I, I actually, though, can I just say something on the retail trade thing? Because what we did see was, you're right, a loss of jobs, particularly at general merchandise stores, but they were more than made up for by uh, additional jobs in uh, transportation and warehousing. So this switch to people buying online and getting out of retail stores, it you know accelerated in the pandemic. It's what we're clearly seeing is it's not reversing. So I wouldn't make too much out of that decline in retail jobs as being the canary in the coal mine. You know, what can the government do? The problem is that the government does not have a lot of leverage to solve the supply problems that are contributing to uh, inflation. What they can do is try to address demand. In particular, the Federal Reserve is going to try uh, to you know, increase interest rates, decrease demand, and try to get these prices down. But they need to be clear, you know, they, they need to make sure that they don't move too quickly, because if they move yeah. too quickly, we could really cool the economy down uh, too much. And, you know, that without even necessarily bringing prices down, because at the end of the day, the Fed's not going to bring oil prices down. And we don't really want to see all these factories shutting down and not using oil in order to bring oil prices down. Yeah, that's right, Tyler. I mean, you wonder if the economy's in a sprint, is the Federal Reserve going to effectively take a baseball bat to the sprinter's knee? I mean, there's ways to slow things down without hurting it. And you just wonder if they can thread what is going to be an incredibly small needle. It is going to be an incredibly small needle. And when you look at the entire post-war period since 1945, we have never had a, a situation in which inflation has been above 4 percent and yeah. unemployment below 4 percent without a recession following in the next 24 months. I, I think that the Fed are still behind the curve on this, though, because in order to meaningfully tighten financial conditions, you have to raise nominal rates by more than the change in inflation expectations. And inflation expectations, according to survey data, have risen by anywhere from 200 to 400 basis points. So, you know, 100, 150 basis point rate hike is, is not going to do what the Fed needs to do. And on the fiscal policy front, look, one of the biggest drivers of, of the surge in inflation in recent months has been energy. And there are concrete steps that the administration could be taking today to start bringing down some of the, the, the mid, medium to longer run pressure on, on energy prices by increasing permitting, increasing leasing. Heck, if they really wanted to bring down some near-term price pressure, uh, they could be issuing some Jones Act waivers. But we're not seeing them do that because it's evidently politically untenable. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.